So over my right shoulder is a photograph of a man named Caleb Wallace, 30 years old, father of three. He is the founder of the group called Freedom Defenders. Now, this group staged two major protests, protests against lockdowns related to the pandemic, uh, protests against mass mandates, and also COVID-19 vaccines. Caleb Wallace, after founding this group, contracted COVID-19. He died. As Yahoo News explains, Wallace of San Angelo had been at the local Shannon Medical Center since July 30th. He had been unconscious, ventilated, and heavily sedated in the ICU there since August 8th, the San Angelo Standard Times reported. Caleb Wallace began experiencing COVID-19 symptoms last month. Jessica Wallace, his wife, told the newspaper that her husband initially refused to be tested and took unproven home remedies for the virus, including high doses of vitamin C, zinc, aspirin, and ivermectin, a deworming treatment commonly given to livestock. Yeah, so obviously ivermectin did not save his life. The vaccines, however, would have saved his life. Had he not believed the misinformation about ivermectin being a treatment for COVID-19 that's sufficient, and had he just gotten what's been proven to be safe and effective, one of the COVID-19 vaccines, he would still be here today. He would still be there for his children today but he fell for misinformation and he died after possibly influencing hundreds of other people through the group that he founded to also not take the COVID-19 vaccines also to be anti-mask but he's not alone I want to talk about another individual named Robert David Steele. Now, you might have heard of him before because he famously proclaimed on InfoWars that NASA was running some sort of a child slave colony on Mars. And um, yeah, on top of that, he joined and popularized QAnon. He was a 9-11 truther, a Sandy Hook truther, and he later became a COVID-19 truther and even bragged about being one of the first people in the country to call the virus a hoax. Well, he ended up contracting COVID-19, and he also died from COVID-19. Vice News reports, Steele, who was among the earliest QAnon promoters and helped the conspiracy theory move from the fringes of the internet into the mainstream, was hospitalized with symptoms of COVID-19 earlier this month, but he continued to spread anti-vaccine and COVID denial conspiracy theories until the end. Quote, I will not take the vaccination, though I did test positive for whatever they're calling COVID today, but the bottom line is that my lungs are not functioning, Steele wrote in his final blog post on August 17th, accompanied by a picture of him hooked up to what appeared to be a ventilator. Now, Steele's friend named Mark Tassi, who is a fellow conspiracy theorist because, of course, confirmed that he did indeed pass away, and he seems to be implicitly blaming the hospital, claiming that they didn't give him hydroxychloroquine tablets and even prevented him from taking said medicine, except hydroxychloroquine wouldn't have saved Steele's life. Getting vaccinated would have, though. Notice a trend yet? Mark Bernier, considered a mainstay on conservative talk radio in Florida, was vocally anti-vax, even considered himself Mr. Anti-vax, claimed that the government was acting like Nazis by encouraging vaccinations, has... Well, I mean, I, I think you already know. As Politico reports, a conservative Florida radio host who spoke out against COVID-19 vaccines died after a weeks-long fight with the virus, marking the third radio personality to die from coronavirus who publicly rejected vaccines. Yeah. And look, we can keep going. Christian radio host Jimmy D. Young, who called vaccines government control, dies of COVID-19. Unvaccinated Florida woman comes home from COVID hospitalization to find unvaxxed husband dead of COVID. Conservative radio host who mocked vaccines, Phil Valentine, dies of COVID-19. Vocal anti-vaccine broadcaster Dick Farrell dies from COVID-19 complications. Leslie Lawrenson, who bought into anti-vax misinformation on Facebook and shared videos of himself after contracting COVID, telling people that it's nothing to be afraid of, ended up dying from COVID-19 as his condition worsened. Do you get the point yet? How many people who you listen to are going to die from getting COVID-19 after telling you that the vaccines aren't safe, aren't effective, how many more deaths is it going to take? I just, I don't understand it. A lot of folks, probably, they started on this trajectory, you know, they believe that vaccines 
aren't safe or they're less safe than getting COVID-19 because they were duped by misinformation. You know, they, they vocalized this and then somebody confronted them about that and maybe they doubled down and they're just like abiding by this belief because it's really difficult as human beings to be proven wrong. But this isn't about proving anyone wrong or anyone being proven right. This is about your life. This is about your life. What do you care if you're proven wrong or right at the end of the day if you end up dying because you refuse to do what's been proven to be effective at preventing death because of this virus? What's it going to take? I mean, I just, I don't understand why people will seek out some sort of alternative treatment, be it hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, when we know exactly what's going to prevent you from landing in the ICU or dying from COVID-19, the COVID-19 vaccines. But people just, they're stubborn, and once they select a belief, they're not going to deviate away from that belief. Part of it is they like, you know, I don't know, triggering people, owning the libs by not being vaccinated, by sharing anti-vax misinformation. But this isn't about anyone. This is about you. This is about your health. So, what I want my viewers to do is share this video. Share this video with someone who they know who's anti-vax. And understand that this video being shared isn't out of spite. It's not to prove you wrong. It's to tell you to protect yourself. These deaths are sad. And yes, it is deaths of people who are propagating the spread of misinformation that will lead to more deaths, but it's still sad. And these should be lessons to everyone who listens to these individuals. They're dying because what they said was wrong. And it doesn't matter if you getting the vaccine means that you were proven wrong. It's not a defeat to do what's right and logical to protect yourself. It's to be celebrated. I know people in my life who were anti-vax, they saw the way that COVID-19 affected one of their loved ones, and then they got vaccinated. Guess what? I didn't shave them. I didn't shame them and yell at them and say, ha, see, I told you I was right. I commended them for doing that. Because changing your mind and becoming right, actually looking at evidence, listening to experts, that's to be commended. It's nothing that you should be ashamed about. We've all been wrong at some point in time. If you're a human being, at some point in your life, you're going to be wrong. And admitting that you're wrong is just a part of life. It's part of the human experience. And what's worse, dying from COVID-19 or living but having to admit that you were wrong? And, you know, I'm assuming that people deep down know that they're wrong. I think a lot of people truly believe, you know, to their cores that this vaccine is more dangerous than the virus, which is absurd. But they have been duped by misinformation. And as many people as we can possibly convince, I want to I try. I think that's a worthwhile endeavor because every single life matters. Seeing these folks die at such young ages is horribly sad. And had this person not been stubborn and misinformed and misinformed others possibly who might also die, things could be different. So just stop with the stupid misinformation, turn off Facebook, stop listening to Fox News, and listen to what medical experts are saying. Look at the evidence in front of you. The vaccines are safe and very effective. Get vaccinated before it's too late. If not, I don't know how many more of these stories it's going to take to convince you. But I mean, this is your life that you're playing with here. So if you're wrong, uh, you know, uh, may the odds ever be in your favor because this is not something that I want to be wrong on. When it comes to stories related to health uh, or issues related to health, rather, you don't want to be wrong here. You can be wrong on other issues. But on this issue, if you're wrong and you get COVID-19, it's catastrophic.